Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Future of E-Commerce, where today we're talking about one of my favorite topics, artificial intelligence and how it's going to revolutionize the world. And yeah, we all know maybe the robots are taking over. They're taking over soon, at least. But we're going to explore today some technology uh, shifts that are changing first the consumer behavior as well as our behavior as store owners and e-commerce marketers and inside the organization. We'll even see inside operations and other things like that. I'm really excited for today. My name is Derek Haney. I am the CEO of ecommercetech.io, and I love hosting these events for you guys on a monthly basis. We are live, and I would love it if you could validate that you can hear me by saying something in the chat. You should. There should be a chat box around. You could either be watching us right now live on YouTube, Facebook, or from the ai.ecommercetech.io website. Just say something in chat like, hello from wherever you are uh, today, and maybe tell us a little bit more about your store and what you're hoping to get out of this session. We're going to be here for five hours, jam-packed content, back-to-back -back sessions. I'm really excited about a lot of the talks. I see Martin says he can hear me loud and clear. Great. From GB, which we will assume it means Great Britain, I'm, I'm going to go with, yeah. Autumn says she can hear me. Great, Autumn. Good to know. Uh, anybody else around here? George from Vietnam. What time is it for you, George? I Thank you for staying up so late, I'm assuming. <laughs> uh, Richard from Mission Viejo, California. And you can hear me, which is perfect. I'm not too far away from there myself. Cincinnati, uh, I'm assuming. Cincy, Cincinnati. AI works. That's a good name given the topic here. Um, awesome. It's great to have you guys with us. If you, you should see my comment that I made just a second ago, we've got show notes for you. So all this is, is we've got my team member, Autumn, working very hard for each of these sessions. She takes notes and puts down maybe some links or, or the email address of, of the person that you can follow up with if you enjoyed their session, so forth and so on. So please follow along in the show notes. It's a great thing to bookmark and you can use later, or maybe even take from there that like, five-step strategy that's going to uh, change your business. And so that's what those are there for. Other than that, all of these sessions will be available on demand within about 48 hours at the uh, from the end of this. We actually will, you'll see it live on our YouTube page, but you'll all, we'll actually cut each episode so it's a little bit easier to find and catalog in our YouTube account. So you can go over to that YouTube page, hit the subscribe button if you want. We only release some of the best stuff on e-commerce and technology. So if you wanna follow along that, definitely uh, feel free to, to subscribe to the channel. Um, other than that, it's time to give a special shout out to all of our sponsors. We couldn't do this event without our sponsors. They are what make this event free for everyone to attend and free in perpetuity. So definitely we wanna give them some praise and a shout out. And today, you know, it's all about uh, how artificial intelligence is changing the world and honestly, uh, th it's these technologies that we're looking at that, that are making this fundamental shift from what I call the information era of the last 20 years into what we're currently entering, just I, I call it the recommendation era, because artificial intelligence is, is finally helping to us kind of figure out what to do with this data. And it's making suggestions on, you know, was there a return on ads been too low or too high? Or should I be tweaking, uh, you know, the content on my site? Uh, maybe even the copywriting is being created by artificial intelligence these days with tools like Copysmith and Pencil, trypencil.com, I think, or .io. Some of these really revolutionary uh, AI tools that, that are just making it a lot easier to create, let's say, ad copy and all of that stuff. But um, so anyways, thank, uh, let's give a special shout out to all three of our main sponsors. We've got LimeSpot, which we're about to hear from Sharon in just a second. She's really revolutionizing what it means to do on-site personalization. Their tool is so cool because it takes data from across the industry um, of all of their accounts in order to understand individual uh, consumer behavior and group behavior in order to predict what's going to sell. You know, how are we going to merchandise our, our website better? Um, so, so definitely check out LimeSpot uh, for a personalization recommendation tool. Then we've got Octane AI, the messenger and SMS marketing platform built for e-commerce, a great tool. Now this one, a little bit more work maybe for you to manage than LimeSpot, but once you get it off and running, you're sending SMSs, you're sending uh, messenger notifications, you've maybe integrated this into your ad campaigns, and you could even be using their on-site quiz tool in order to get more information from your customers and convert them along a sort of quiz funnel 
funnel, which is becoming very popular these days, this tool really like makes that connection for you and, and can drive significant increase in conversion rate because of the way that it builds relationships with people. Speaking of building relationships, our third sponsor, Gorgeous, the help desk for e-commerce. They're doing some really cool stuff with um, macro suggestions and automation and uh, and using artificial intelligence to even uh, you know do what Google does today, which is suggest the end of your sentence and things like that. So it's really great to, to see them pioneering using artificial intelligence for customer service and streamlining that process for your customer service reps, which means you need less reps to get the same amount of work done without sacrificing on that connection, that one-to-one -one connection you wanna make with your customers. Okay, let's see. I think I covered everything. Um, that's it from my end. Sharon, do you have video? Are you ready for me? If I can get you, uh, and she's in the green room, to uh, to show video, I'll bring you on here in a second and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get this thing started. Are you with me? Sharon, video. I think she's working on it right now. Um, yeah, so w while we're waiting, maybe on, on that, um, it, what are you guys up to? Tell me a little bit about your store. I'd love to hear more um, and, and understand what you're doing. Maybe uh, are you using artificial intelligence in your store today? Are you seeing uh, major improvements in what can happen for your store? All right, we've got her. Sharon, are you ready? I'm bringing you in. Come on in. I am. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hey. Thanks, How's it Derek, going? for the amazing introduction. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. I mean, when we talk about uh, pioneering artificial intelligence and driving real change in, in consumer behavior, your tool has to come front of mind, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm biased, but I certainly think so. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I saw you were you were getting your screen share ready. If you want to put that up in the background, we can add it to uh, to to the screen here, and I can let you take it away uh, to tell everybody here what artificial intelligence is because we kind of glazed over that, right? We haven't even covered the the basics of of what we're talking about because this buzzword has so many different meanings. I think it's easy to get uh, a little convoluted and confused on on what we're here to discuss. Absolutely. I have stream sharing go on, on, but I don't think you can see my slides. I, well, they're not up yet, but I see I, what you've got shared right now is this screen. I don't know if you want uh, another one. If you go ahead, if you want to swap to your presentation and then I'll add it to the uh, stream and we'll make sure it's, it's full screen here. Okay, I am on the presentation. Looks good. Here it is. It, I promise it's, you're on screen. I'll go ahead and remove my face because no one's really here to see me today. Uh, and I'll let you take it away. Thanks so much, Sharon. Okay, thank you. So as Derek mentioned, today is all about AI. Um, LimeSpot is a smart uh, merchandising solution at scale. Um, what I'm going to cover today, though, is what AI is, how to think about your buying um, decisions, and the primary use cases of AI, and then tell you just a little bit about LimeSpot. So first of all, um, it seems like everyone these days is hanging out the AI shingle. Um, every place you go, you see people adding to their website that they you know, are AI driven and uh, AI can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So wanted to put some clarity around that um, as understanding what AI is, is gonna help you find the right solutions for your business. So let's talk a little bit about AI. Um, it is a pretty broad category. Um, it includes everything from technologies that are meant to him mimic the, uh, the human brain to predictive analytics, um, machine learning, which I think many people in this, cat in this world hear about, um, natural language processing, vision, computer vision technologies. And so when someone tells you, you know, and you're thinking about AI, if it's unclear which one, which type it is, that's because there's so many different types. So I uh, wanna take a little bit of time and talk about what some of those algorithms are. Computer vision is about companies who can identify what's in photos and tag it and therefore relate it to other kinds of content. Uh, natural language processing, which is one of the things that, uh, that LimeSpot uh, enables, is the ability to re read 
um, human written text and identify the important language out of it, um, take tags out of it, and turn it into usable data in the system. Uh, machine learning is the concept of, is really the primary concept that people think about. Um, and what this concept is, is if you think about traditional algorithms, think about, for example, an attribution algorithm and uh, identifying um, and trying to identify how much should I attribute to category A versus how much should I attribute to category B. In the past, those kinds of things have been, um, or what's driving my behavior on my site, uh, what are my consumers doing and what what matters um, in the past a lot of that has had to be done in linear modeling with you know algebraic equations or um, differential equations and here um, this is a world where you give the system a starting set of data and an ending set of data and the system identifies all of the connection points between those data sets, determines over time how to route that, how to weight them, builds out that schematic, um, hence the visual on this page, and, um, and then educates itself. So everything about AI is a closed loop system where the information that is learned when the system behaves gets fed back into the system. So for example, in, in the LimeSpot world with, personal, uh, with personalized product recommendations, if a customer clicks on something versus doesn't click on it, if it becomes a purchase versus doesn't become a purchase, every one of those data points feeds back into the system so that the, net, the subsequent uh, usage experiences are, get better and better and better. One of the reasons AI has become such a big thing is that all of our worlds, you know, the merchant world um, outside, you know, the e-commerce world has gotten so sophisticated and there's so many disparate data sets. A lot of us use, you know, BI to identify it but um, and understand it, parse it, see relationships. But when it comes to leveraging all that data, this is why AI is so important. It can ingest massive amounts of data and it can, um, and then it can incorporate that data in a way that humans cannot. Um, so when you're thinking about buying an AI product, I think there's a set of decisions that uh, considerations that you should take into account. The first one is what we covered on the page before, which is um, how do you think about um, understanding which algorithms they're using, at least to the extent that it's going to drive a differentiated experience um, versus you doing it in a manual way or a more traditional way. Um, the second thing is data sets. Uh, you, we all know the expression garbage in, garbage out. Well, um, the, the quali quality and uh, fidelity of your data is really important. So if you're considering multiple solutions, it's good to understand where that data is coming from. If in the personalization world, for example, um, there are solutions that take the data within a website and determine how to optimize within that data set, um, first party data, but small data set. Um, in the LimeSpot world, we co-op our learning. So we keep our data separate, everything is GDPR compliant, but we, have the system learn off every single one of our 7,500 plus retailers so that you're benefiting from the system getting stronger and stronger every time anyone clicks on any of LimeSpot's websites. So data sets are really important. And the and like I said, the fidelity of the data set, making sure there's no junk in it. Um, the second thing is making sure you have access to your data. There are a lot of systems that, um, and I think about you know parts of Google being black box, right? Google shopping, you put information in, you see what happens on the other end. You don't get that much information about why they're showcasing certain products and why they're not. And so, you know, but when you're bringing something into your, you know, tech stack that's on your system, you want to make sure that the learnings and insights and data um, is available to you and not just feeding the machine. And then the third thing I really want to cover on this topic is um, the primary use cases. And uh, obviously AI has applications throughout um, 
throughout society, but in the e-commerce marketing st uh, stack, I tend to think of it in three categories. The first one is using data for targeting to drive better performance. Um, and that's something, you know, that that several of the companies we're speaking today are going to talk about. Um, and that's uh, putting the right content in front of the right people, identifying when to reach out to your consumers um, in order to drive the most value and to get them back to your site. The second one is automation. And this is really reducing your overhead where, um, you know, most companies on Shopify, you know, not this, not the size of an Amazon or Walmart, not unlimited resources. So the idea of using AI to keep your site fresh, to do the merchandising that you may not be able to do manually um, is a really important component and, and buying consideration. And the third one is insights. We talked about data access, but really having that data exposed to you in such a way that it drives better buying decisions. Um, so that's really, you know, each each of your buying decisions will be slightly different depending on what the value proposition is of the uh, provider. But these are really the ways that I would recommend thinking about any offering that you um, that you may buy. So with that, I want to talk a little bit about personalization generally, and then um, how LimeSpot personalization can support your business. So benefits of you know using AI for personalization. Um, the first one, you know, very customer centric, is improving the discovery experience, helping the consumer at every step of the journey get find the right products at the right time, um, and and they're the products that they want to find, which is why the targeting component of this is so critical. Um, by doing this, you not only help them with that buying decision, but data shows that you're, you're helping them um, get a stronger affinity to your brand and uh, are more and the customers are more likely to come back. Um, the second thing is, um, or the third thing is increasing sales. And of course, that's at the end of the day what we uh, want to do with our businesses. So that happens in a couple of different ways. If you um, are using an upsell or a cross sell solution, uh, you can increase your basket size, your average order value um, by putting the right products in front of consumers along that path. You know, platforms like ours uh, drive, you know, two to five X increases in sales. I mean, in conversions and the combination of either of those actually AOV or or conversion will increase your sales, but the combination will really magnify the impact. And then that third, that last piece is reducing overhead. So um, site freshness is a huge issue for brands and the or for most brands. Um, and the idea of a system that will take what you have in your catalog real time and merchandise it throughout your site so that you never have to worry about, you know, where am I putting the content? Will the experience look stale to my consumer, um, to my buyer? And um, are those right products being put in front of them? Um, that is done automatically if you're using an AI solution. Uh, so on the category of multiple data sets, uh, the more I, I tend to think, you know, fidelity being constant, that the more data, the better. So, you know, in a personalization product, you um, want a system that's going to understand all the dynamics of a consumer. So, you know, in the in the case of <clears throat> in the case of LimeSpot, you know, understanding products, people and intent. And so on the product side, we're um, you know, ingesting the catalog, understanding what is in those listings. That's where that natural language processing coming comes in, creating that schematic of how your products fit together and also what uh, what kinds of buyers those products would have. So, you know, a lot of people can tag out tops and, you know, short sleeve and black, but you also, you know, ideally want a solution that is going to say, this is a luxury product, this is slim fit, you know, this is the type of consumer that it will um, attract so that it's already um, targeted for that audience base. 
The second thing is understanding your consumers. It's great that you and your, your consumers who come to the site, it's great if you understand your products, but if you don't know who is shopping on the site, then you can't do a good job of targeting them, at least not until you start looking at clicks, and then you're really driving using clicks to be the informant for the experience, which is necessary but not sufficient. So, uh, you know, you want a system, in LimeSpot's case, we, uh, in a GDPR compliant way, tag all the, um, tag, tag the consumers, again, GDPR compliant, um, all managed in a first party way, and uh, are able, able to identify them in clusters, which I like to call micro personas. And so in those micro personas, we learn about the behavior of similar customers. And then when people come to the site, we understand what's likely to resonate with them. We understand what kind of products they have, their location, there's inferred demographics about their age. And then the last piece when you're tying these all together, when you're thinking about your data sets is obviously um, behavior on the site. So intent uh, and intent is usually driven by uh, looking at clicks. So uh, in the case of, of AI, you wanna, um, I'm AI personalization, um, there's a lot of benefit available to you uh, at, across your business. So in, you know, uh, in our case, Email performance, we give you the ability to put products into, um, into your emails with whatever provider you have, be that, you know, Klaviyo, Omnisend, et cetera, Shopify, et cetera, so that you can drive consumers to the site um, and you're more likely to help them find the products that they need. Uh, using pro using AI, and I will talk about this briefly, with Google Shopping uh, to ensure that your catalog is, is getting visibility and it's getting at the lowest possible acquisition cost. Uh, site tools, which I think is what we're most known for, so creating those personalized experiences, driving those higher values, and then management tools. So in that, that list of things that you should be looking for from your AI tools, this is where insights can help you um, optimize your business. So for example, if you see certain products are having, you know, high click through rates on recommendations, but high returns, you know, it means that that product uh, may have a challenge with it where it is compelling to customers, but not fulfilling that need. Um, or uh, looking at how different placements on the site impact your customers differently. So using uh, A-B testing, which is also in the product, to do continuous optimization. So um, there's opportunities for, um, and in fact, we see in every case that uh, customers see a positive impact to their bottom line and their KPIs for their business. We talked a little bit about um, driving traffic. This is really the ability to uh, use personalization in your in in conjunction with the segmentation or personalization that your email platforms have, um, using it to um, in abandoned cart experiences, in post-purchase upsells, in inspiration emails. And it's, you know, in all of the cases, it's a simple, you know, snippet of code that gets copied over that has your look and feel that allows you to give your consumers that experience. When we um, run uh, emails, versus not having them in the, uh, in the platform, we see as much as a 70% increase in click-through rates. Um, and that does have an impact on the end purchasing as well. So this is a really powerful way to think about tying your different AI platforms, your different tools together. Um, also reaching customers more effectively. Uh, so I wanna talk just for a minute about our, our Google product. So. In talking to Google, and we are working directly with them, in, and we did in developing this product, in talking to Google, um, there's a stat that uh, a very large number of uh, products get have a validation problem. So if you think about Google, the, the pain points we see with Google Shopping for retailers are threefold. The first one is getting your products validated in their system and getting them to be continuously available. So your catalog at any moment in time, 
being available. The second one is getting that organic exposure, right? Showing up in the shopping feeds, figuring at making sure that when consumers filter as they tend to do on the shopping page that um, there's enough data in there um, that you can be seen. And then the third piece is uh, return on ad spend. And the challenge for most retailers you know, <clears throat> in the Shopify ecosystem is even if you're able to get everything in, even if you can get your data, um, enough data in for the system to think it's interesting, there may not be enough targeting traffic uh, from your site or there may not be enough um, information for Google system. And so it's learning on your dollar. And uh, that can lead to having a very low uh, return on ad spend. So what we have um, built for consumers is a product for retailers is a product that hits all three of those uh, issues. It uh, it validates it pre validates your products. Uh, we use our AI to fill in the holes in the listings. Um, to identify if Google is going to approve it. The data we have, and this is not from Google, is that up to 90% of products, when people push them over from the, their Shopify um, catalogs, can be rejected from Google by Google. And that may take you know three to five days to get that data back, and then it's unclear what's in there. So the idea of having your data augmented, having it you know pre-validated, giving you the opportunity to bulk uh, update it if you need to. We take that 90% rejection and we turn it into a 90 to 95% approval. And then we continue that feed so that your full catalog is available. In getting more exposure, we take all the data that we use in on-site personalization and we apply that information to the products and we pass it to Google. And so with this data, Google can now list you as effectively as it lists you know, the, the top 100 retailers because it knows not only is this a you know maxi dress, but it's that is listed as pink, but it's champagne color. You know, it has a V-neck. Um, it's chiffon, and so that allows uh, consumers to do that filtering. It also allows Google to figure out when to show you in those organic searches. And so we have found that our um, the retailers that use this product uh, get a much higher listing on um, on that organic page. So uh, free traffic is a great thing. And then the third thing is I'm um, taking the data, not only as we talked about the product data, but also the um, audience data and passing it through to Google so that it accelerates their learning of who is going to buy your products. And by doing that, um, it you know, they can create lookalike type audiences um, and identify the right people. And we see, you know, uh, you know, two to 10 X increase in return on ad spend with customers who are using this. So I think it's a, a full win. Uh, in any case, it makes sense to use AI in your performance marketing solutions, not just thinking about how this would work on the site. Uh, so a couple other things um, about how to use product recommendations. The goal is really to put it at every step in your experience. Um, in a call that uh, Omni sent in, um, and I did last week, we talked about some of the best practices around site optimization, things like um, putting recently viewed into every single page so that you're basically giving consumers a product driven nav bar so that they can always get back to the things that they want to go to. But there's um, also discovery. And, and when you look at these tools, you want to figure out both what is the right data and does it give me the sophistication I need? So one of the things, for example, that we've recently enabled brands with is the ability to put not only you're recently purchased for a consumer. So now you're taking data from, from the card experience and pulling it back into, say, the homepage experience, but then building boxes on top of boxes, right? So 
taking these are the five things that you bought the last time that you know in the past on our site and here are related items to those five things immediately giving them that customized experience by tying the boxes together so more than just saying hey am i exposing the right products in a like related items this is about tying things directly back to past experiences on the site. And so by putting these pieces along each step of the journey, you get your consumers much further into the process. And so just highlighting a few of the things you can do here, first touch, um, obviously product pages, that's the place people normally think of recommendations, collections, collections by segment on your website, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, cart and post purchase experiences a lot of people think that putting uh upsell in the cart may break their conversion and what we've seen is actually the opposite that when you put the other products in there sometimes it's um there to you know to really drive people up to the sh shipping threshold and therefore gets them to finish sometimes it just brings them the products that they were really looking for we find that the cart numbers tend to go up the conversion numbers with card recommendations tend to go up significantly. Um, Pop-ups and slide outs I don't need to talk about. And then, you know, thinking about beyond your existing site, should you be looking at headless solutions, really taking that same experience and pushing it out to any place you're meeting your consumer. So um, those I would recommend, you know, using all of those pieces throughout your journey. Um, and then one last piece that I want to talk about, and then if we have time, I, it looks like I might have five minutes for questions, so feel free to drop some questions into chat. Um, we have recently um, brought a new product to market that actually allows you to layer on segmented experiences, so uh, personalizing your entire a site, your entire page, not just using product recommendations. And the, the way this works is we give you um, access to all the data that is in your system. So that's, you know, your past buying behavior um, for, the cons for consumers, you know, uh, what products have been bought, what the frequency of visits are, as well as, you know, combinations of behavior and buying experiences, categories, location, and expose that to you so that you can create segments that you want to target on your site. Um, and then give you the ability to put not only, you know, product recommendations, but also images, texts, CTAs, basically anything you can um, drop in an HTML and target it separately so that when consumers come to your site, if you know them, um, you can have a targeted experience. If you don't know them, you have your fallback experience. And the last piece of that, which I think is really exciting as you think about the next generation of this is really, you know, identifying which collections are going to work with, for which segments. So tying all that data that's coming in this case from AI being exposed to you in segmentation and allowing you to take your experience on your website to the next level um, is something that I think is really exciting for the industry. Um, so with that, I am going to wrap this up, stop sharing, come back to you guys because I can't see you at all and <laughs> in that channel and see uh, what kind of questions we are we have. I think we have five more minutes. Is that correct, Eric? Yeah, about yeah. that is totally fine. And I know we uh, we kind of started early as well. I have a really specific question for you. You, you know, you showed me this, the magic of how you're segmenting all the customers mm -hmm. there and you said, oh, we can predict, you know, their age and their gender. And I'm like, okay, I, I can I can see how sometimes you can predict maybe their gender because if they go to the man's section versus the women's, how are you, how are you actually predicting age and how are you how are you make how are you, like show me the secret sauce right like how, how is it actually happening? A hundred percent show you the secret sauce, um, <laughs> or the engineering team would kill me. Yeah. Uh, but uh, um, I can tell you that what what we're doing is basically seeing what kind of products are bought by what people and identifying what kind of products are bought by what age groups, and then inferring based on behavior on the people side, whether they're in those age groups. And okay. we have a pretty good hit rate across that so that then you can say, I'm targeting, you know, um, female millennial buyers. Um, and you may not get 100% right, but you'll get pretty darn close. And then as we get data, one of the 
um, one of the cool things that our system can do, and because I'm not one of the engineers, I can I can brag about it, um, yeah. is that um, we then use that data real time. So let's say that we thought someone, you know, we had had that like rare occasion when we're off. We thought someone was a certain type of buyer, and they start acting different on the site. We can actually real time resegment them so that the rest of their experience is matching what is going on what um what their behavior is identifying if that makes sense yeah that, that's just kind of funny you would you would hate like a consumer like me maybe i'm like going for a website tear down and i'm like clicking on everything and you'd be like what the heck is like a, who is this person they're they're looking at every single product one at a time and going in opposite direction so uh i wonder if that becomes a, a segment it's like a, a <laughs> never buying clearly like a website developer or conversion rate optimization nerd <laughs> yeah i think you know if you think about segmentation what you're not necessarily doing is you're not necessarily saying I'm going to uh, create a formal segment for everyone. You say, okay, I know that there are certain people that are going to resonate with certain things. For those customers, I'm going to create custom experiences. Um, and if somebody starts to act like one of those customers, I'm going to create a custom experience for them. But if we don't know who they are, then I'm going to put them in my still highly targeted you know, product recommendation environment, but in my baseline, what we call fallback you know, segmentation experience. So Derek, your, your per, uh, micro persona of one <laughs> probably lands in the fallback experience. Yeah, I I got gotcha. you. All right, how can people get started with LimeSpot today? Give me the give me the real quick pitch for everyone. Oh, thanks for giving me that opportunity. <laughs> so, um, the best way to get started on LimeSpot is to either start on our website, obviously LimeSpot.com, or go to um, to the App Store and you can actually download the product. We have a 15 day trial period. Um, that is for, um, we have two apps in the App Store. We have our Google product in the App Store. It's called Spud Ads for Google Shopping. We have our personalizer product, which is our product recommendations product. Both of those are self-serve. And then the content personalization is currently um, rolled out with larger retailers. So customers that uh, engage on the direct sales side, which is in our world, typically above a million dollars in annual sales. Um, and so that's available in that environment. Um, we certainly are considering whether we're going to bring that out into the market all the way down to the, you know, SMB space. I got gotcha. you. And it is pretty easy to get started, right? I'm, it's it's relatively uh, like a, a few clicks in and I'm and I'm seeing a better personalized experience. Absolutely. So, so if you, um, when you download our app, we immediately ingest your catalog and your buying history. So that whole process that I talked about with the schematic being created with natural language processing and using our co-op data. So we, we end up immediately with a picture of your website. And then when you go in, we have something we call the box designer and you literally go in, we pull in your website and you can almost drag and drop and play place in where you want your boxes to be. Um, you have full editing functionality of the CSS. And so it looks 100% natural on your site and um, do that any place that you need. And we have customers who get up and running in anywhere from like 10 to 30 minutes in that experience. So you can be up and running immediately and starting to see the traffic and the benefit. I love it. Especially when you were talking about the Google shopping and how you're plugging in the gaps. I was like, oh my God, if you've got, you know, over 40 SKUs, I'm imagining this is just like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> it's like a lifesaver. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And we have customers who are using it that have, you know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand SKUs. And don't forget there's the, there's the product and the variants, right? And in the perfect world, you want both of those yeah, subs variants. to really get that exposure. And so you want to have something where you're not constantly republishing publishing and, manu and uh, manually curating it. Yeah. All right. One question here from AJ. Uh, and I think we'll, we'll probably cover this in a few of our later sessions as well. But what is your take on video? Where do you like to see this? I mean, and you think about your product recommendation widgets. I feel like you could add GIF or video into those things. I don't know if you've ever thought about tinkering with that at all. 
Um, so we don't usually have people because um, it would create this combination of images and GIFs and video, right? We don't it's, typically see them put into the product recommendations, okay, I see. but I think um, putting them in various places on the site, and I am, um, AJ, I am not the expert. I used to work in the video industry, but I'm a little rusty on it. Um, but where I would say you want video is um, certainly on your about page, frankly, which is outside the traditional customer journey so that people can really you know the benefit of going d to c instead of being on amazon being on walmart being in a store is that you have this direct voice with your customers so if you can do an identity video i think that's really strong in driving retention even though it's outside personalization and then i think on product pages um having you know short how to videos including um you know maybe if it's fashion like what it looks like on a real human that's where i would focus the video is really on the product on that consideration point because you want them to go from hmm, maybe i like this product to wow that's exactly what i need and i'm going to put it into my cart yeah i agree and I, I think that's exactly it's it's like it's either for building trust or explaining a really specific functionality of that product that you know an image a still image doesn't do justice and it's uh, it's maybe not as important for the the fashion or the dress. Like you, maybe, yeah, you do need to see like every angle of it to really get an idea, but it's it's more maybe for a tech, like physical tech product mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, an innovative new water bottle design. You want to see how it actually works in action or something along those lines or a backpack and you want to see all the folds and, and creases inside of it. So I, I think it, it comes into play a little bit more there. And then obviously, uh, social media is, seems to be the best place to engage with video, but of course, this is kind of like usually a very top of, top of funnel activity uh, doing that. But um, yeah, so uh, it was so great to have you and 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 start this this day off uh, talking about you know the 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 different styles of of artificial intelligence that you kind of laid out for us. And it was great to see uh, the tool that that LimeSpot has created and the the power from Google Shopping to on-site personalization. So thank you so much, Sharon, for joining us. Thank you, and and if I could just really quickly add, I hope everyone will stick around to hear um, Lindsay Lorraine later, who is who runs a, a complete woman-run uh, company. She's a founder and who will talk about the Easy Peasy brand. So we'll be doing that later today. Yeah, that'll be in three sessions. So everybody definitely stick around here and uh, till the very end of everything, of course, but especially for that session. All right, thanks so much, <laughs> Eric. I'll see you back here in, in just a few minutes. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Bye. Awesome.